appreciate you joining me. It's uh, good to see you virtually as we do these things these days. And uh, a big thanks to our mutual friend, but I, I really sort of, I've known him for years, to Alistair Dickinson for, for making this happen. A wee intro through Dicko. How is the big guy? Yeah, man, he's uh, he's real well. Lovely guy. Um, a kindred spirit of sorts, to be honest. Um, got a lot in common with him and um, just um, all things sort of uh, masculine, you know, like uh, powerlifting and strong man, all those vibes, and obviously a scrub whisperer himself. So um, it's, it's good to chat with him. Really progressive bloke, lovely dude. When he was up here before he moved down to Bristol, we lived quite close to each other, so we did quite a lot of training together, and we were always sitting around the fire pit after training, bacon and eggs on in the morning or the steaks. Has he got a fire pit or any <laughs> setups down there at the moment? Is he- <laughs> I haven't been to his place yet. He's living in Porter's Head. Um, but yeah, that sounds very dicko. Yeah, something oh, yeah. like that. There's some kind of spiritual vibes there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. caveman, caveman vibes off dicko, definitely, definitely, absolutely. Yeah. But you, yourself, mate, how's your week been following the uh, the interview that has somewhat taken off? It's been a busy week. <laughs> yeah, man, it's been fruity. Um, <laughs> somewhat overwhelming. I've never, obviously, it's it's quite novel to me. Just all this kind of attention. Um, funny how much it resonated with people I, I, it, it was it was it was nice to have that like effect on people when you kind of delve into your own eccentricities you know what I mean when you just put yourself out there a little bit and I was obviously very caffeinated at the time and my um <laughs> amicability with Thomas Tate and the media guy was interviewing me is 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 quite transparent there so once I got him going I was like okay here we go I'm gonna just keep going for laughs here and it just kind of yeah went from there Good. So, so I mean, it's it's just it's incredible how it just took off. You know, through how the the boy, the guys in your media team put it out there, and it's obviously just the powers of social media. But I mean, there's there's another interview that they put out as well when you're in the stands. That was is that was that taken at the same game or was that another time and they just released that again? Oh, that was that was a season ago against Breathe uh-huh. away. Yeah, that was a, a different time. Yeah. Um, Equally fun though. Good day out that one. Uh, we just beat them. It was a very like consummate performance, and I was just feeling off the buzz. Just got off the park, absolutely blowing. That was a tough game. Um, I was emaciated afterwards, and yeah, I just went off on one again on the mic. It's 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 nice to come to a club where you just feel very much yourself. Well, the, the media team at Bristol seems to be pretty on the ball. I mean, their their Twitter feed and everything that they put out seems to be very well received. And they're obviously when when things formed and the new name was launched, they were very creative. So having you now sort of around to sort of try and catch you at different op- at different times and opportunities, it must be exciting for the media team and yourself to see where this might go. Because I mean, as as supporters of Bristol and, and the people out there just in rugby as, as fans we want more of those conversations. We want more of the honey badger sort of type of uh, incredible chats pre and post match. And if you're the man for it, I bet it's, it's going to, we're hopefully you're going to see a lot more of it. Yeah. Ho- <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I don't run out of material. Thankfully, I'm just, most of that was, uh, yeah, it's, it's freestyle for the most part. So I'm, I'm hopefully I'm up to the challenge. I, I really enjoy it. It's something I do like doing. Have, like, have, uh, you all, have you always spoken like that, or were you ever a bit sort of shyer through interviews? I did see yeah. you way back, maybe your early days of London <laughs> Irish. I saw that one. Anyone that's listening, go and check that one. Out. You're pretty straight. Man. Oh, you're a different man. You're a boy. You're a boy in that video. Oh, and th- yeah. this man that we see now, um, sort of confident in front of the camera on the microphone, it's it is hilarious. Yeah, it's um. I think with rugby well when I started out at school I I was a socially anxious kid like um I went to a boarding school and um it's a pretty um you know what school's like kids are kind of you know what it's like there's if you're not a really kind of upfront guy outgoing it, it can be a tough place to really express yourself and when I came out of school I sort of took that forward into rugby and um and you know what pro rugby is like, like there's just alpha males everywhere. Everyone wants to kind of stake their claim in the, in the changing room and stuff. So as I grew older, I sort of, um, I had sort of a, a spiritual revolution, if you like. I sort of had like an epiphany of sorts when I was about 28, 27. 
and I really grew into myself and sort of um, took the shackles off in terms of like, um, I don't know, conforming. That's probably the wrong word, but I know what you that mean. kind of vibe. Yeah. Putting and a then, bit more of yourself, so, putting a bit more of yourself across and exactly. honest with a response instead of just maybe towing the line as a lot of athletes do and they have to straight off the pitch yeah. or pre-game you've got to say what is allowed and you're thinking about your job and you're thinking about your agent that's going to comment if you speak out of turn I mean yeah I'm, I'm glad that you sort of uh, look at it differently now it's, it's exciting there'll be people as I said earlier just waiting for for Max to get on the mic <laughs> yeah it, it is it's is fun it's definitely fun it's not it's again like that positive confirmation of like being able to truly be yourself around people's like that's what sort of encouraged me to be that way. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a um, it's been a lot of fun. I, I look forward to getting back on the mic, so to speak. Yeah. So I, as you walked away from camera, what, what did you think anything about it? Did you think that oh, that went quite well, or that was a bit weird? What was your sort of immediate reaction as you <laughs> walked away, and the interviewer was just crying with laughter? No, uh, like. With tapes, so I'll do sort of strange extra st extroverted stuff around the changing room and stuff like that around the club quite often, okay. especially if I'm in a good mood. So it was sort of a, a dialogue that was pretty natural, that, that I, was organic between me and him. And it's something I do often. So I didn't really think anything of it. Um, so yeah, it, it did come out of the blues. And what else? What were the boys like in the changing room when they saw it released and it and it did go viral? Any 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 of the lads have a, a bit of a laugh with it? <laughs> yeah, the, all the boys were sort of. I think they sort of expect that from me now, so they all just think it's great. To be fair, um, they love reading the comments and stuff, which is always which is always popcorn. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, don't take this the wrong way. I wasn't so familiar with you before I saw the interview, you know, I've been a rugby fan my entire, yeah. my entire life and only sort of started paying attention to Bristol really when Dicko went down, you know, when a close friend is, is involved in the club. But I've now since been through your Instagram and I've now sort of looked at Twitter and all these in your profile and obviously everything's rising. But there's some interesting stuff that seems to have been posted prior to that, um, to that interview. And there's a lot of squats and just in jeans that looks sort of a bit of a home session. There's a lot of interesting food <laughs> In, in sort of creati creativity in the kitchen going on. So you've, that character that you've you've built, that persona, tell us a bit about that. Tell us a bit about the, I mean, you're just knocking out squats, heavyweights, just in your jeans, you know, just getting on with it and sort of really yeah, so masculine <laughs> vocabulary in, <laughs> while you're cooking. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, so the, um, the weights, well... Weights have always been a big part of my life. It sort of got me into rugby, really. It, like, opened doors for me when I was a younger lad. I was, I was smaller. So I was like, I'm going to get massive and large and in charge because I felt like I was undersized. I went to a big uh, rugby school. So I just hit it hard. I didn't really know I was hitting it hard. When I look back in hindsight, I was pretty zealous. It was fanatical. And um, I took that forward. And with rugby, obviously, um, there's a lot of rugby players who don't really use the gym in a disciplined way like it's not in a weird way like there's so many guys who are amazing rugby players who um can barely lift a toothpick mm -hmm. so I just thought at the time with rugby I was like I'm gonna just get good at this whilst I'm trying to master a sport so I've just been smashing out but with the jeans my my motto is this if you can't squat <laughs> or run a man down in your trousers day to day you shouldn't buy them so my getaway sticks have to always be clad in such in such garments and um with the food stuff it's just always been a big passion of mine and um being able to narrate that way is just a nice kind of outlet of just being a bit theatrical and fun and it just seemed to like people seem to enjoy it oh it certainly is it's, it's certainly enjoyable to watch and it's completely different you, you sitting in the bath obviously talking about <laughs> Was it was it you had nuts or something or a, a sauce or something? And the nut butter, yeah. Nut butter uh, in the bath and then yeah. on you on you go to the preparation of the food, which yeah. is quite aggressively described. It's 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 class and it's different. It's fresh, it's new. I've certainly not seen something like that before. Are, are you are you building for the future? Are you are you looking at opportunities? And if, is that must have been mentioned to you now that you know media 
there's people crying out, say, get them in the commentary booth, people get them at pitch side, all this sorts of stuff. Has that been thought about? Yeah, so I actually had a dabble. I um I did a BT with Rupert Cox recently, uh, Leicester versus Bristol. And um the Leicester fans weren't too happy about it, but it seemed to go down well with the with the Bears, um, the Bears faithful. I did my best to be um, objective, but it, it was quite difficult watching your teammates out there. Um, but I had a lot of fun. I was just throwing out as many kind of graphic similes as possible and just try and bring a bit of colour to the to the game. Um, but yeah, I would love to get into media. Like I enjoy sort of, I always enjoy dialogue, like things like this, like talking to you, um, entertaining people, getting reactions. I like that facet of um, media. Uh, mate, mate, you're, you're built for it, mate. Is there someone in the background, or is there something? Oh, oh God! Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Oh, what is that? Oh, sorry, that's yeah. That's you doing fun now. It's all good, mate. It's all good. I had I am. Um... A Pacific Ocean roar on last night, and her dog was in the the podcast and everything. Her dog was at her feet and all stuff going on last night. So it's yeah, it's uh, it's one of these things. That's not your app. That's not your average water jug. Is that just a jug you drink out of instead of the? Yes, uh, the tankard, <laughs> uh, a Stein skull. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the, the media stuff, and then I see you tweeting about movies and all sorts of stuff. How's lockdown been for you as a pro player? How's how's um being locked up this sort of environment around bristol and the bears um, do a tricky time so first lockdown was quite um i think it was novel for everyone it was quite interesting i sort of just got on with sort of what i got up to i was reading a lot um i started getting into like philosophy there was some cool stuff like um i started off with like um the stoics so like marcus aurelius and stuff there was some really good stuff in that and then obviously i had the home gym set up early doors so I got horribly strong which was really fun so I just sort of was just going after powerlifting and then anything I could do outdoors like in, in sort of in that a lot of time of an hour um yeah. trying to explore Bristol uh what else um oh I uh got into writing like journaling I was like because obviously there was so much little else to do and I I, I started um I read this interesting book about um, brain training and it's like left-handed mirror writing. So I just taught myself to cursive write with my left hand on, so on the opposite. So I could write like that on the page. That was quite fun. Not sure how much it carries over into everyday life and neurological health, but um, it was really fun to get it down. Um, but yeah, I kept, I kept weird. I also learned how to rope. It's, a, it's like skipping it's like a skipping rope but it's sort of it's called the rmt rope so it's rotational movement rope and it's a, it's such a cool like flowy um zen kind of vibe it's all about like biomechanics and gait and it's just so fun to try and master um but with the bears um we got pretty lucky because we were being sent our programs and our running and our fitness so there was always still like a, and Pat was holding regular kind of Zoom meetings. So there was always this kind of clarity of conviction. So we still had a purpose, if you know what I mean. I think, I think lockdown kind of, um, as far as I can tell, when I spoke to friends who are working, kind of set people off the rails in terms of that. Did you find yourself quite disciplined? I mean, Pat obviously kept you in line in those sort of new skills that you were learning. Were you disciplined on it or did you have the sort of, the battle with yourself some days where you had to sort of retune, refocus? Yeah, I, I did, but um, there was a bit of that. But um, for the most part, I was, I was very disciplined. I was quite lucky. Um, I'm not really a big advocate for motivation. I'm sort of much about that word, the discipline, like self-discipline, discipline equals freedom. I think that's, that's a wise motto. I think there's, very, there's some real gold in that. I, I just interviewed a guy called Mike Sorelli, who's part of, when you say discipline equals freedom, that's Jocko Wilnick. That is Jocko, yeah. yeah so it, yeah. Mike Sorelli's in Echelon Front. He's one of Jocko's um, team members. And I interviewed him the other day and, uh, all about discipline. 
you know, he, he'd been to, he's a former Navy SEAL combat veteran and all that sort of stuff. But the discipline that these guys put in, they have the down days, the dark days, the tragedies at war, but always go back to discipline. And, you know, and, and the amount of rugby players that I've spoken to, discipline is what matters because motivation coming comes and goes, as you say. Yes. You know, it's, it's so like, fleeting. Yeah. Fickle. Yeah. It definitely is, mate. Um, talking about Bristol and everything that you've got going on, sitting top of the league. You guys must be pretty happy. A bit of a lead ahead of Exeter at the moment. How's the how's the fuel around the camp? Yeah, it's really good. Um, <laughs> uh, Pat keeps us on our toes still. Uh, there's no kind of there's no resting on the laurels. But um, man, it's been awesome. Yeah, it's a very good vibe. Um, there's a lovely like the leadership group's awesome as well. Like the player group, like guys like Stephen Lutua, John Afoa real kind of good cats very um compassionate people so um it's it's uh, yeah it's such a great uh, great team to be a part of in the moment I'm, I'm very fortunate and then training with like randrandra and uh, pieto those guys running about <laughs> what's it like in that environment with them hey man hey you think you can play rugby and then <laughs> and then you see them and then you're like oh i'm just trying to play rugby and it's like playing hide and seek with harry houdini they're just freaks of nature um i always like like i try and figure that out because they are they are like obviously amazing athletes but there's more to it than that i think like i would i uh, when i watch them around the club and stuff i just think that they're um the way they approach performance is like very much in the moment like they're they're playing it's a very childlike approach to the game they're not really consequence driven um Whereas with my, in my mindset, I'm like all the stuff going on, like flying through my head, like got to do this, got to be here, got to do that, got to do it. Whereas I think Charles and Semi, those kind of players are just like, I'm going to get weird here. And they're just in it, just like there. Um, but yeah, uh, and they're really, really good, really good guys, really, really lovely humans. And the, the facilities you've got at Ashton Gate, obviously top notch, it does look incredible. And I've spoken to Dicko, I mean, he's still to go to work there, what, what you've got, the setup in that environment. And I've watched some of your behind the scenes footage and all the videos that you do. Do you enjoy yeah. that side of it? Sort of letting people in behind the scenes and, and hosting those YouTube videos? Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, people seem to really enjoy them. And I think it gives an insight into sort of the social side of the club as well, like the yeah. kind of rapport and banter between players. Um, but yeah, the the facilities are excellent, and like obviously the backroom staff and stuff, are amazing. Like the SNC department, the medical department, like everything is top notch. Um, so many good people, and the, the 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 gym is just glorious. And that um, the barn, the um, that's wonderful when it gets a bit a bit brisk outside, raining sideways vibes, and then they tell you you're in there, you're like, oh thank God, all the pitch is frozen. Man's running around with like tacking with the studs on the ice ice rink, but um. Yeah, man, it's it's a it's a hell of a place to be. And when you you've been to a couple, you've been to a few clubs, and you've also been over there. I see Hawks Bay and the Rebels in Australia. So you've you've travelled a bit. And what were your what were your times like abroad? Enjoyable times? Yeah, um, it was really interesting. Um, so travelling from London Irish to Hawks Bay was oh, that was an experience because it. Uh, the ITM, the might attend is quite like um, semi-pro vibes. Um, so you're sort of, you. I came in, I was seeing these guys who weren't quite super rugby standard, but were trying to make that next step. So it was sort of like an academy system for some young guys and for other guys, it was just like a bit of semi-pro rugby for five months of the year. Um, and then obviously the super rugby guys would come back and play. And they were like the first team of regulars. And um, if they weren't all blacks, and it was awesome, man. Like, I loved it. It's sort of like it was a throwback to, like, because I played four seasons of pro rugby at London Irish just before this. And it was just really, like, nice. It was just, it was just different. Like, it was a very um, sort of social, family-orientated kind of club. Um, and the, the work ethic was stunning. Like, never seen anything like it. Some guys just were sacrificing so much to to play that like I was there when Ehi West had just sort of he's now playing at La Rochelle 10 okay. and he just started um there 
and that was sort of um, really eye-opening to see what young players have to do to make that level. Um, and then obviously living in Napier was cool, like really nice art deco place on the, on the west coast of the North Island, like lovely, lovely spot. No, East Coast, sorry. And um, it was just so different. Got to go like hunting and stuff regularly. Fascinating lifestyle. Um, and then uh, Melbourne. Whoa, that's some city, boss. Have you been? I have been, yeah, some place. Oh, what a place. Lovely quality of life. I was like, I sort of understood why the Australians are so kind of pompous about breakfast. And then I went there, I was like, I get it now. <laughs> um, I had a great time. Um, it was difficult, like uh, for reasons I can't quite explain, I, I did battle for form. So it didn't go quite as planned, but I, it was a very good experience for me. There was quite a lot of adversity um, and playing Super Rugby was, was something I planned when I was very young. So it was awesome to get it done. Who else was at the Rebels when you were there? Was any other uh, UK players? No, no UK boys. Uh, Nick Sturzacker. A guy I was playing with at Bristol was there. Geordie Reed's playing at Gloucester now, back row, the dreadhead, awesome player. Um, Scotty Higginbotham. So like Dan Cipriani had just left, for example. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was it was a team of like real young dudes. It was it was so fun. <laughs> Who have you looked up to? Obviously, being at Hawks Bay and around potential wallabies and all blacks, and you've now got Loitua and John Afoa, all blacks at Bristol. You know, who, who have you looked up to or who have you tried to emulate throughout your career that you've thought, that's a player, I'm, if I can be similar or get to those sort of levels, you'd be over the moon? I think as a young man, like as a, well, as a young boy, when I first started watching rugby, it was definitely George Smith. He was the, he was my sort of idol, like for was the absolute legend. I only converted to prop when I was like 17. But unfortunately, I did not have anywhere near the skill set of, of the great one. But as I grew older and I sort of be, tried to become like this, uh, trying to become and master the front row, um, I think I just took bits and bobs from all sorts of guys like Clark Dermody, um, played for the All Blacks a few times, London Irish Loosehead and Skipper, amazing player, like maybe slightly undersized prototypically, but all round skill set, very special guy. Um, Alex Corbuzero taught me a lot, very, mm -hmm. very, but then, and then I'm obviously now I'm with John Afoa and you can't really speak highly enough of the guy. Like I was really impressed with, cause I never, I obviously played against him a few times, but I didn't know what his like professional sort of training and stuff was like, man, he gets after it. He is on job, but he's also this really like prankster, but when he can switch it like instantly and he's just a killer, it's, um, He's got a remarkable mental skill set and obviously he's he, he's actually a hell of an athlete in the gym as well, That's despite funny. his sort of like used body. <laughs> yeah, he's been through a lot, hasn't he? He has been through yeah, no, he's, some he's career. He's been through the paper run of Mordor, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you kept your eye on the Six Nations? Are you looking forward to this weekend, England, Ireland? Yeah, I've been watching actually. Yeah, it's, um, oh, that'll be a good one. I think Ireland will be fancy, fancying it, I think. And then England are obviously buoyed by beating France just. Uh, that could have gone either way, but it should be interesting, yeah. That'll be de definitely interesting. We've got the Scots have got Italy, so I mean, that's a must win for us, but then a game in hand against France. But Wales, did you see Wales having such a, a strong Six Nations? I mean, they're going for the Grand no. Slam this weekend in France. I don't think a lot of, a lot of people wrote them off. That it won't happen. I think, yeah. I think everyone was sort of, like after that All Nations Cup, were like, Wayne Pivak's in trouble here. He better have a strong Six Nations. He needs only one game away from a Grand Slam. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Wales has worked like, whenever you look at their team, it's always pretty strong in it. Like Six Nations is funny as well. It does weird things. It's like its own entity. Like you can throw the form book out the window at it. It's like, it's like this massive European tourist attraction. It's a strange tournament. Like all sorts of stuff just happens on it. Like you wouldn't have seen England drop in this many games either. Yeah, unusual. And without crowds throwing a couple of red cards, games are all over the place. It is. It's yeah. just unpredictable what's going mm -hmm. on. And you, you just don't know. And then you've got referees. Was it Roman Poir? The weekend, he's sort of in there jackling the ball, looking to see if there's trials. Yeah. All, <laughs> all, <sorts, laughs> all sorts was, of stuff. I've never on. seen that before. That was good from him. I like that. 
he was all in. Um, but come on, let's get back to the interview. That what's this week been like? Is have you been a, approached by what's happened? You know, is your social media has obviously gone through the roof, over a million views. You were in the sun, the newspapers, all sorts of stuff. You know, are you just taking yeah. it in your stride, or is there is there certain things that have happened? At this point, um, nothing's happened. But I've got yeah. There's some there's some potential media opportunities. Put it that way, where we can still get wonderful and <laughs> articulate ourselves. But um, we'll see. Yeah, hopefully it will open some doors and I can um, have some fun with it. That's it. Do you see? I interviewed. Um, oh God, it's going to be uh, Christian Day, former Northampton. Um, yes, Master Chef finalist. Master Chef. Yeah, yeah. Do you see yourself going down that route? Anything edgy on the cooking front? Yeah, I definitely could do that. Like, that would be a lot of fun. I'd love to do that. And, like, Christian Day, by the end of it, was a man. He had some techniques, didn't he? It was really impressive. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing it with a master chef. That'd be good. His, um, his Instagram just constantly makes me hungry. It's incredible. The burgers, the, the pies, the biscuits, everything that he does. He is, he's kept at it on the cooking front and it's just awesome. It's just an awesome Instagram page. I love it. Um, but mate, from watching your, um, your cooking videos, they're so unique in what just makes me laugh out loud. And as I've showed a few mates at work and all that sort of stuff, I was like, you need to watch this. And they're like, why, guys, why is the guy topless? I was like, just watch it. Just, just watch it. This is what he does. And then you go on, like you say, the jean, the jeans and the squat rack and all that sort of stuff. It's unique and there isn't enough characters anymore, you know. Um, fortunate enough to have recently spoken to the Honey Badger, who just became a household name, a fantastic rugby player. But the way he sort of just spoke off the cuff after the game, the characters out there, keep you need to just keep yeah. doing your thing, keep doing your thing and, and, and get into it. What about your own podcast or anything like that? Have you thought about those opportunities? Yeah, I, I, I think it has to be done really now, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> it'd be so much fun. Like, it's just like balancing it out with rugby, and because I'd like to open it up to all sort of ambivalence. Like, I'd like to get it. Like, I'd like to really broach some other topics as well. But um, <laughs> it would be a lot of fun. I could imagine myself having a lot of good crack on a on a podcast, and I really enjoy these. Like, these are always fun. I never really regret having a conversation with someone do you know what i mean absolutely what other topics are you into what sort of things uh so everything from like um uh i'm quite into like at the moment i'm kind of getting into um philosophy and um sort of psychology like i'm very interested in that at the moment obviously health and fitness um like biohacking stuff mm-hmm um sort of anything that to do with the optimization of like the human body um cooking love the food um and as you said before films like i'm big on storytelling like books and films um so yeah there's a there's a fairly thick sort of um bridge of topics you can get into it's it's the fun in chasing guests and finding somebody that you want to yeah you, you've seen them or you've heard about them and you get a no and then you've got to ask someone else for an introduction and, and all that sort of stuff it's podcasting for me it is that journey it's it's an enjoyable journey to find out about people you get 40 minutes an hour joe rogan gets three hours with his guests you know you get uninterrupted time to just chat about whatever comes up movies are a huge part of my world absolutely love the movies avengers comics all sorts of stuff it's, yeah same nerd culture big yeah it, it's brilliant and i saw that when you did that interview as a young laddie at northampton you said you're a comic geek you loved your comics i yeah. still dabble i still dabble just yeah still, are, you a collect, are you a collector or just the movies no <laughs> not a collector anymore i used to collect a bit i was just like i can't keep up with all these mad all this madness and um but yeah so i've smashed the movies i just find the movies sort of disney-fied too much of the characters do you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah, they just sort of brought them, they made them too human and PC in some respects, which was disappointing because some guys needed a bit more grit and edge to them because that's what made them so fantastic in the first place. Yeah, but then Deadpool comes along and uh, he he rips up that place. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll concede that. They actually nailed that one. Like Ryan Reynolds, it was almost, he was born for that role and they did very well there. Like, I think they really nailed Deadpool, to be fair. 
when he describes it. There's, there's so many bits in that. I love that movie where he describes Liam Neeson and Taken. And he's like, he's just a bad, <laughs> he's just a bad dad. He's lost his daughter three times. It's like, he's just, fair enough, yeah. he, gets her, he gets her back. But there's something in that when he says it. He's like, three times he lost his daughter. <laughs> yeah. Three movies. The um, similes in those scripts are so good. Very, very well written. Absolutely. Um, mate, we, what we cover, we've covered it all, but it's, it's just so funny. When the first lockdown happened, and do you remember Andrew Cotter started um, doing his dog videos? You know the commentator? Have you seen the dog videos for Andrew Cotter? Mabel and all. Oh, with them. the uh, Zoom meetings? Yeah, no, he would be walking his dogs. You've not seen the Andrew Cotter? You need, no, you I haven't seen on, those. Straight on to YouTube after this. And Andrew Cotter, yeah. the commentator, he's got his dogs, Mabel and Olive. And he'd be out walking and he would just start doing his voiceover commentary of the dogs in the river or chewing a stick. Went completely viral. Um, went, yeah, went viral. He's now got book deals. He's now got so much going on through just talking to his phone while filming his dogs. And that, oh, sort, of, that sort of thing, he ca he's capitalized on it. He's totally capitalized on it. And, I, and I'd love to see you in, in the way you are. I hope I hope the right opportunities come your way because it, I just keep saying it. It's so unique and it's a breath of fresh air to see somebody just having a, having a go at speaking the truth, being themselves on camera when everything is so protected and careful. You know, you yeah. gotta just keep doing your thing. And, you yeah, absolutely. And it's not a bad thing that people are, are, are feared for their jobs it, and all those sorts of things. But yeah, exactly. And like, it, it's just the PC culture is quite strong now you know um yeah i know what you mean but yeah so far um it's rewarded me well like it feels good to just be out there and it's encouraged me and people seem to react well to it so um i'm really enjoying it yeah see, see the nutrition side of things and the cooking and all that what, what are you like are you pretty strict with your diet keeping up the size for the front row or are you do you have your uh, your down days in the chocolate bars or what are you like yeah, I have I have the autodonic feeding window, sir. But um, for the most part, I um, I eat actually really. I have to eat quite clean because I have a autoimmune condition, reactive arthritis, and um, if I eat real bad, I find that it it kind of really flares up. So for the most part, I'm I found that the carnival like mostly carnival works well for me. I know that sounds outrageous. Do you only really eat steak? You're a savage, but um that works really well for me and um it keeps weight on easily and I've, I've enjoyed it a lot the sort of mental clarity i've got from it and the energy and stuff um and i've kept weight quite easily to, to what extent i mean meat at every meal are you chucking eggs yeah so i'd eat yeah so most meals is like for the most part most of my calories come from fish uh, red meat and eggs um but there's obviously I'm still I'm still keeping it with veg, uh, there's still some vegetables in there it's not completely that way but a lot of offal as well I eat quite a lot of like liver and heart um, and it's worked really well for me I've never felt better in terms of like systemic inflammation which I'm usually quite conscious of just because the nature of my condition okay you are a kindred spirit with Dicko and that is that is his diet that is right <laughs> up the street with a, and he'll probably hate me say I think he loves a Haribo as well I think there's a, a yeah. Harry Bow fetish. A lot of rugby players have that for the energy and the the pitch side sweets. But no, the the carnivore diet that really interests me. I, I've never done it. I do eat a lot of meat, cook on a lot of fire pits and things like that. But yeah, the, I think I've seen Joe Rogan did it. There's a lot of UFC fighters that do it. That sort of strips weight, and you find that when you put the meat in sort of the strict diet, you can hold your weight. You can hold your weight. Quite yeah, well. I find so long as I eat like enough. Yeah, like um, and obviously. It, eggs is, is a good one as well yeah. like um carry wise it's pretty easy and um i've sort of sourced a, a hunter who sort of sells me whole venison carcasses so i can do it reasonably cheaply as well which is always a um like thing when you're eating so much red meat it's quite expensive but if it's like good quality grass-fed wild animals i just can't see the short side of it but obviously people tell you all these health implication things, but then if anecdotally you feel better than you ever had when you were eating sort of a lot of carbohydrates and stuff, it's hard to kind of argue with that. Absolutely. And you mentioned, you mentioned the carcass there. I know that's how you describe your body and the, the players 
<laughs> roaming, roaming around the war zone of the of the rugby pitch. And is the carcass for, for the front row? The carcass still in good nick. He still are aches and pains and bumps and bruises. How, how does the body recover after a game? It's pretty good still. Like I find once you're in the meat grinder for a while, like when you're fit for a bit. Um, your body sort of adapts to that sort of that routine and the game better because I was out for a while I had a few calf tears like grade twos um, I only started playing like last weekend against Worcester again it was about a 10 week layoff oh my god mate the last two weeks so in rehab I was outrageously strong for me like it was I was so strong. I was like 170 kilo bench press for eight reps, that kind of vibe. It was so cool. I was like, I am Superman. And then I played one game of rugby, mate. Next week, it was like I was hung over the whole week. <laughs> I just couldn't push a thing out. Like, ah. Oh. So yeah, it's been fun like getting that back and feeling that kind of um that rugby kind of shape come back, you know, that kind of robustness and sort of um stamina. It's so funny. Because people think you're in such good shape when you're um, playing the game. But realistically, what happens is you just kind of, it just, the CNS just gets blown apart in the front row, like from sprinting around into a scrum, isometric load through the tons in your cervical spine, and then go again. And you're just like, oh, God. <laughs> and it just, like, mate, you just, you just get weaker, like, and you just do your best to keep everything ticking along and robust. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it feels so good to be back, just regularly training and playing. That's it, mate. And and plans for the future, obviously, obviously still contracted and things like that. But just stay with Bristol, get the championship this year, and look at opportunities. Is that what the sort of future holds, or would you have you got studying plans? Are you going to go down the psychology route and things like that, or what's? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I'm going to do. I'm going to play. Hopefully, Bristol will want to keep me for a bit longer play as long as I can here enjoy it because I just love the vibe here. it's just so good but boys are great and then yeah just throw myself into life I don't think I'll study I, I just I just kind of want to go after sort of whatever this thing is that kind of drives me with the media stuff that kind of uh sort of addict uh, not addiction but like I don't know what's what draws me to that stuff is just that kind of talking and entertaining and performing um i get a similar buzz off that as i do with rugby and i can only the buzz i had from rugby drove me to where i am now um i'm sure i can make something happen if that buzz is there for the latter do you know what i mean we'll just keep getting in front of the camera keep doing your thing i'm sure yeah. it'll, all, it'll all fall into place mate as whispering to the mics yeah, yeah we need we yeah. Do they do it in rugby where they, is it rugby oh. league where they mic up players during the game? Have you seen any oh, of that on YouTube? So, I saw CJ Stand actually had one. Oh, yeah. For still. That was really good. Really enjoyed it. He's quite an emotive guy. I think it was like celebrate his um, retirement. And um, it was really good. Like he's, he was, um, but it doesn't happen often, I don't think, in rugby just because of the nature of having to mic someone up in a game. It's kind of, it's a bit of a technical thing going on there. But that would be so fun. But you wouldn't hear much from me, mate. Just like Darth Vader, Darth Vader, lot of voice boys, Larry's just going for gold. Um, but um, who would be good on the mic? At, um, you know, John and would be class. Really? He does a bit of selecting. He's pretty quick, gives it the big end. Um, best guy I played against for sledging. Have you come up against Marler? You, you, you sledging Marler would be a good one. Have you scrummed against him? <laughs> He's got some good ones. I'll tell you who's class, actually. Ellis Genge. He comes up with some cracking one-liners. Is he? What did he say to me last game? I got yellow carded one time against Leicester at Welford Road <laughs> for taking out the nine. And he was jogging past, and it was like scrum time was just a battle. And I was up against him tight head. Um, I was playing tight head. And he was like, you do not want to come on. You're on rollerblade, son, and all this. And I was just cracking up. It was, there was so much good crack there. Um, he he comes up with some corkers and Carl Sinclair as well. I think Carl, Carl's in your squad. It was that like with the front row with Carl. Oh man, I love that guy. Yeah. Um, he's a complicated dude, very colourful character. Um, he's really interesting, quite a deep deep guy. Like there's a lot going on in that head of his. Brilliant rugby player as well, but um, 
we go back a fair while as well. Like I've known him for a while. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got nothing but time for him. Am I right in saying, did uh, Ellis Gange not come on the weekend with similar colour hair to you? And have I not this seen, is true. And have I not seen you with pink hair and all sorts of things going on? What's the story with the hairstyles and things like that? Oh, I just, it was like, it's, it's part of like, I don't know. It was just like, I was just going to have a have some fun, be like, just express myself, throw some weird colours in my hair. But Pat was like, every time I put something too fruity in there, he's like, you better play well this week. And I was like, oh, Christ. <laughs> So he just puts the fear of God into you before you get on with pink hair. You better do something in class. <laughs> but yeah, it's all good, man. Um, it's just been a bit of fun. I was kind of, you know, when you just every day you look at yourself and you've got the same color hair. I was just like, well, girls always do. I'm gonna have a crack. Why not? Be, be just a fresh change. Why not? Be? Why not? Well, here, Max. It's been brilliant to catch up. I'm so pleased that you said yes to Dicko and. Uh, we made this happen, and I mean it. I, I can't wait to see more of you popping up on social media, and I hope you get the same reaction every time, mate, because uh, <laughs> a breath of fresh air. It was just a fantastic interview, and and good luck for the rest of the season. Obviously, you're in a great place just now, and uh, yeah. you need to give Dicko a big uh, a big high five from me because I've not seen him in ages. Obviously, there's not much travelling going on. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. I will, man, I will. It's been an absolute pleasure. really enjoyed myself. Thanks so much. Good on you, mate. Take care.